Let's have a look at how this works in practice. So we're asked to solve the equation 5x plus cos x equals 5. Now remember Newton's method is to find roots of functions. Here I'm asked to solve an equation. So the first thing we should do is push everything to one side. So 5x plus cos x minus 5 equals 0 and then we'll call this thing our function because now we've just converted it to a question about finding a root of this function. So we're going to let f of x be 5x plus cos x minus 5 and we want to find a root of it. We want to find a root in the interval 0 to 1 to six decimal places. So Newton's method says, well, you're going to need to use the derivative. So that's 5 minus sine of x. And we're going to have to work out what the Newton iterative formula is. That is, the next approximation is obtained from the previous one by taking the previous one minus the function value over the derivative of the previous one. And in this case, f of xn is 5xn plus cos x sub n minus 5 all over 5 minus sine x sub n. So we're all ready to go. The only thing now we need is a place to start. Um, an initial guess. What is our x1 that we're going to start to plug in? Well, we're given such a small interval, 0 to 1, that perhaps we could choose anything in this interval as an initial guess. Uh, maybe it doesn't really matter. Um, maybe we can choose 1, maybe we can choose 0, and then just see, start to go and see what happens. Um, and, and that's perfectly fine. You can try that. What I would like to do here is just indicate with this example how you may go about trying to get a good initial guess. A good initial guess for x1. Um, the issue here is we want to find an initial guess to five, the root of 5x plus cos x minus 5. I'm going to rewrite that as cos x is equal to 5 minus 5x. So I'm interested in, so the root of f is really a solution to this equation, and I'm interested in approximating a solution to this equation. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to sketch the graph of both sides of this equality. There's a cosine function, so the cosine function starts at 1 and comes down, and that's going to be pi by 2, and it's up here at 1. And then there's this 5 minus 5x. So 5 minus 5x, it has a root at 1. So pi by 2 is a little bit bigger than 1 and a half. So 1 is probably somewhere around here. And therefore our 5 minus 5x curve looks something like that. And this red one was our y equals cosine of x. And I want to find the x value for which they intersect. And that's going to be this value here. That's the thing I'm interested in. And I notice that, well, it's a little bit less than 1. Maybe I should choose 1 as my initial guess. Maybe I should choose a half as my initial guess. Uh, both would probably be good choices. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to take um, x equals 1 to be our initial guess. Now we have an initial guess, we have our iterative formula, so now we just start cranking away. What is going to be x2? Well, x2 is x1 minus f of x1 all over f prime of x1. So that means plug 1 into the expression up here. So that's 1 minus 5 times 1 plus cos of 1 minus 5 all over 5 minus sine of 1. And now to work out cos and sine, we're going to need to use some computational tools, a calculator or a computer. In fact, I would encourage you to use a computer, and through this discussion, I'm going to show you the tools that you should be using rather than a calculator, because a calculator is going to get kind of tedious. You want something that you can go and quickly edit the, uh, the code that you're entering and quickly do the executions. You don't want to spend all your time pressing buttons and trying to get these things in there 
because this is an iterative process. We want to take what comes out and throw it back in again. And so I'll show you how to use a computer to do that. For right now, um, we work this out using a computer or a calculator and we get the value of, this is approximately 0 0.87 zero zero seven three six nine five eight now what do we do well we take that number that just came out and we feed it back in to Newton's iterative formula so now we take x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2 and firing that back in doing the computation again we get a value coming out of 0 0.87122 one four one four three. Now we take that number, we fire back in to Newton's formula, and we get x three minus f of x three all over f prime of x three, and what pops out is about zero point eight seven one two two one five one four five. How many decimal places of accuracy did we want for our answer? Well, we wanted to find the solution correct to six decimal places. So I look back now. Do I have six decimal places correct? Well, of course, I don't know the actual answer, so I can't compare this to the actual answer to know if I've got six decimal places correct. But we're going to use that result that I outlined on the last page. If the two iterations, two successive iterations, agree to six decimal places, then you know you've got the answer up to six decimal places. So let's just look. 871221. 871221. So they agree to six decimal places. So that means we found our answer. The solution to 5x plus cos of x equals 5 is approximately. x is 0 0.871221 and this was correct to six decimal places. So we've got our solution that we are looking for. As you can see here, our calculations required quite a bit of uh, technological use. We needed a calculator or a computer to start working out these values. Um, but the goal here in applying Newton's method is not to do this tedious arithmetic. You want to have an understanding of the big picture and how Newton's method applies. So we have this iterative formula and we have our initial guess. And having those two bits of information, the rest is just merely mechanical. You plug the value in, you get something out. You plug it back in, you get it back out. So you keep going in, out, in, out, in out and you keep getting these next approximation. This is merely computational. So if it's computational you should be using a computer to do this. Um, and I wouldn't use a calculator, use a computer. So how do you use a computer to do this? Well I've got some stuff already written so let's have a look at that now. So if you go to the course website in Canvas, click on additional resources, it'll take you to the resources page which contains a bunch of things I put together for this course. Uh, this page is accessible outside of Canvas, so I'll put the link in the YouTube description below for those who don't have access to the Canvas container. You'll see all the applets we've used over the course of the term, including the Newton's Method one we just looked at. And this is the one I'm interested in here, Newton's Method Implementation. So click on that link and it will open a page that looks like this. And there's a little scripting window in here. It's a Sage single cell, so what it's doing is it's taking whatever you type into here and sending it to a server that's running the mathematical software package Sage on it. It'll do the calculations on that server and then send the information back. So we've done an implementation of Newton's method in here. I've declared a variable, x. I've typed in a function, and this is the one we're going to look at, cos of x plus 5x minus 5. And then I've put in the Newton's iterative formula. Now one of the things to notice is that I 
was able to use a diff command. What's the diff command? It's taking the derivative of f with respect to x. So here we're using a derivative command in Sage. So I'm asking Sage to compute the derivative of f with respect to x. And I'm going to call that new function df. And then I'm going to build this Newton's iterative function, which is, it's a function. It takes an input, what we've called xn in the past, works out f over the derivative of f at x, and then takes that away from x itself. Then I have to put an initial guess in. I've asked Sage to print out the initial guess, and then I've asked it to apply Newton's iterative method to that. So throw x1 into this Newton's iterative function and spit out x2. This capital N is just to turn it into a floating point or a decimal number, because it will return the exact value. Um, and instead I wanted an approximate value in terms of decimals. And so I've done that a bunch of times using uh, the previous one to spit into the function to, to return a new approximation, and we can click Evaluate. Now one of the things we notice is that, yep, we've got x equals 1 as our initial guess, which is what we just did in the, on the previous set of notes. So let's see what happens. Okay, it's going to ask me if I accept the terms of service, and there it goes. It's now spit out the values that we wrote down previously. So this is how I generated those values. I used a computer to do that. I could have done each step using uh, a calculator or a calculator on my computer, for example. But instead, I managed to put everything all in here and have it compute it for me. If I want more approximations, I'll just cut and paste the previous two lines, change that so that it takes the third approximation in, returns that as the fourth approximation, and then I want it to print the fourth approximation. And there we go. If I wanted to change my initial guess, I can change it. Maybe I'll take my initial guess to be two, and I'll evaluate. Maybe I wanted to change my initial guess to be zero, and evaluate. And in all cases, you'll see that no matter what your initial guess is, it's quickly heading towards, or quickly converging to the root of the equation, or the root of the function. Um, and so you're free to go in, change the function however you like, and change your initial guess however you like, and play with this. I encourage you to play with this. Don't bother doing these calculations on your calculator. It will become frustrating, to say the least, to, you know, all those button presses, and you make a mistake. And right here, everything's implemented already, and you can go in and just change whatever you want and execute it. So I want I wanted to make this available to allow you to focus your attention on understanding Newton's method and how the initial guesses change what's going on. And I don't want you to spend all your time focusing on the arithmetic. That's the secondary thing. The arithmetic, you can leave that to a computer. I want you to focus on the big picture understanding. So that's why this is available. So you can take away the tedious calculations and have the computer do those. So have fun with this and feel free to explore the, the rest of the examples that we do throughout this lecture.